Hey everybody, welcome to Goshen Prepping. Thanks for joining us. I need to discuss the global food crisis that's happening right now. And I know that often this falls on deaf ears in the United States, and not necessarily you, the prepping community, because we want to keep our eyes and ears on these things all the time. But I'm saying why does it fall deaf on the United States? Because our grocery stores, practically speaking, are doing pretty well especially when you look at the last few years. Of course, you know we know the last few years we've seen lots of shortages, literally empty shelves and specific items, not to mention increased prices drastically. And when we hear about things like there's a shortage on rice in the world right now, a global food crisis, I'm not seeing it in the United States. I shop at all the different stores and compare prices. I like to see what's in inventory. And I haven't seen one single store with a shortage on, for example, rice. It goes well beyond rice, by the way. We're talking about grains, we're talking about corn, wheat products, et cetera. The list goes on and on. And a lot of it, if not most of it, comes from what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. But not only that, we've seen from India as well that they are stopping all exporting of rice. And they say it's because of a financial reasons. They're trying to increase the value and price of rice in the country because the rice farmers are having a very difficult time. I personally think it's because India is connected with Russia and BRICS, and they simply just want to sock it to anybody who is not part of the BRICS situation. What do you think about that? Put that in the comments below what you think. I could be completely wrong, but I think that's what's happening. Now, we see shortages happening, but they don't seem to be as catastrophic as shortages we've seen in the last few years. Would you agree on that? And I mean, right now, go through the grocery stores and most of the stuff is there. The grocery stores are very good at front facing, by the way. You know, normally they have a spot for like five boxes or whatever you're trying to look at. And they only have one box in stock or two. So they push them all to the front to make it look like everything's nice and healthy in the store. I'm not talking about that necessarily. But when we compare the last few years, the shortages in the U.S. aren't really happening as much right now. There's a few things. But the prices, that's a different story. We saw in the last few years, as you know, a drastic increase in inflation of grocery food items. Some things went up like eggs, ridiculous, and now it's dropped back down. But there's many things the prices have not dropped back down. In fact, when we look at compared to a year ago, we're looking at overall about a 20% increase in food products in just the la yeah, last year alone. On top of that, 13% increase in oil production and your gas prices at the pump have gone up in the last year as well. Now, what's causing this? Many things, obviously, we talked about Ukraine and we talked about Russia, et cetera, but also just labor shortages are widespread around the country where it's, it's tough trying to get people to get in there and do the work as far as making the food production. Not to mention, we're looking at crazy weather patterns, but I wanna address that for a second. It's amazing to me how that's what they always point out and say, oh, look, we're seeing droughts here and crazy weather patterns here and record hot summers in locations. We've seen records this summer, the hottest that we've ever seen since we've recorded history as far as temperatures go. Is that a coincidence? Personally, I don't believe in coincidences, but I am definitely not jumping on saying it's climate change. And if it is climate change, I am certainly not jumping on saying it is man-made climate change. But what we are seeing are a lot of things orchestrated, and that's where we're getting at in this video. Because understand, the things that are happening now, although things seem relatively peaceful for the average Joe, they don't see a lot of shortages. Yeah, prices are high in the grocery store and at the gas pump, but you know what? Everything's actually pretty fine right now. But again, us preppers know that's not true. And that's why I wanna point out this global food crisis. Because when we see a global food crisis, we're seeing a lot of the different organizations like the United Nations very clearly stating, oh, by the way, this is happening because of climate change. Climate change, climate change. They're always pushing that, that the climate change is what's causing all these problems. And even though in the United States, we don't see a lot of major shortages right now, we are indeed seeing a lot of shortages worldwide. Now, for us in the United States, for the last 70, 80 years, we've always been the top of the food chain, so to speak. We've always had lots of food, enough food, by the way, in the United States, it was anyway. We produce enough food for the entire planet every single day in our country alone. Obviously, that's not happening because we are seeing a lot of droughts and a lot of problems in areas as far as weather patterns. Not to mention, suddenly food plants are catching on fire and burning down. Not to mention that, I forgot how many cattle died from heat, you know, all over the place. Not to mention culling of chickens because of this mythical bird flu. I'm not saying it's mythical, but I don't think it's catastrophic as they say it is. So when we see all these individual things hitting away at our food production, of course we're going to see problems in their food supply. 
Now, the government will say, look, or even like the, say, the, the naysayers will say, what are you talking about? I don't see any shortages. Yeah, but understand that it's a supply and demand issue. If they dr drastically decrease the supply, we may not see shortages in specific areas, but the demand's still there. And since we don't have so many things going to the grocery store, that demand is increasing. And guess what? So do prices. The prices are going up because of this. So we're seeing lots of problems happening worldwide. And we're seeing a mirror of that in the United States, even though it's not as drastic here, it's causing these prices to go up. But stick with the video for a second because where that's heading to, that's a whole different story. But besides Ukraine, we see in Argentina, they're having problems with soy and corn, mind you. I mean, personally, I wouldn't touch soy or corn with a 10-foot pole, although I do love soy sauce, you know what I'm saying? But genetically modified, there are monstrosities in my opinion. Uh, Indonesia is having problems with producing palm oil. Same thing. I wouldn't even touch palm oil. I prefer like coconut, avocado oil, and uh, olive oil for what I use for cooking in my house. And of course, we talked about corn going along with Ukraine as well. Okay. When we talk about corn, we need to understand that it's not simply just consumption because corn is used for primarily three things. Obviously, one to sell to you, good old corn on the cob, or you know, buying corn in a can, whatever the case may be. But secondly, it's used obviously as a lot of animal feed. Corn is a major staple. They like to turn around to feed like cattle, for example. And the third thing they use for corn, by the way, is biofuels. In fact, we see a lot more of it going into biofuels as we continuously see pressure being put on the pump. A lot of the corn is being shifted there. Okay, so here's what's going on. Oh yeah, and not to mention beef, by the way. I can't forget beef. Beef prices, although we do see a little bit of shortages when I'm shopping for beef, the beef prices are out. I mean, it's out of this world. It's crazy. Okay, so here's the problem with all this. Just because in the United States we don't see a rice shortage, just because the beef prices have gone up and we don't see any shortages in that, just because we still have corn in the cob and corn in the grocery stores, we start to understand this as being it not being a problem. But the reason the prices have gone up is because there have been shortages worldwide. And it's just a matter of time before this perfect storm hits between fertilizer, still not enough fertilizer in the United States, a shortage in all these things. We see droughts and weather patterns. The system can only take so many hits before we start seeing shortages. Again, it's supply and demand. We've already started seeing the prices going up because of this, but eventually it's going to be that straw that breaks the camel's back. And now suddenly... We're not going to see simply just toilet paper from mysterious, some mysterious reason disappearing in the store. Or maybe your pasta may be out. Or maybe your favorite brand of, you name it, may be out. Here and there, a little, you know, little hunt and peck, a little tiny things disappearing. No, we're going to see a major, major catastrophic change in our food supply coming unless all this changes. Now, I would love to be the op optimist in this situation. I love optimism. I'm an optimist. But in this situation, you can't simply just put this as a roll of the dice. You can't simply just put this a chance and saying, you know what? I hope the weather patterns get better. I hope the war in Ukraine and Russia stops so our corn and grain starts coming in. All this stuff, understand, is orchestrated in the first place. They are truly trying to make it that our food supply globally is going to be under dire consequences. We're going to see a drastic decrease in food supply. We're already seeing the prices going up. But then we're going to start seeing major shortages across the board, not just toilet paper here, not just grains here, but shortages all over the place, all under the guise of what common theme? Climate change. They are trying to instoke fear. And listen, there's nothing more fearful in a person than taking away their food. We're not talking about just high prices. People are already starting to feel that pinch. But now we have the high prices feeling the pinch combined with all these things starting to disappear from our shelves. This is the perfect storm they're heading for. They're trying to make it so people will literally fall right in line and say, you know what? Oh my gosh, we don't have any food. Prices are already high in the first place. And now the shortages are happening what do we do about this whole situation? Oh, it is the climate change. Because they already know that there's a huge population, by the way, who blindly follows climate change, climate, like mind, mindless automaton zombies following through. That's what they want. And a lot of these, unfortunately, are our youth, not all of them. And again, there are some youth who are basically see through their smoke screen and garbage. So I'm not saying all of them, but if you want to change things, it's always through the youth. And this is the first place they hit it. It's constant, this, this, this. 
It's interesting. My kids a few years ago were in 4-H. In 4-H, I always looked at it as being like the the old school, this is how we farm, let's get back to nature. And they, instead, they went to a seminar and talked about how GMRs are ama- GMOs are amazing. GMOs are going to save the world. And they're trying to push all these monstrosities on who? The youth. Because the more the youth hit this, the more they will follow along. But there's always going to be the naysayers, which is us this time. There's always going to be the preppers who say, I don't think so. And therefore, they're going to do everything they can to try to change us and blame everything on climate change because you know what? Hungry people will do desperate things. And that desperate thing may be government will do what we ask. But we're not there yet. Right now, if you go in the grocery store, practically speaking, you can buy whatever you want to. And as preppers, this is what we cater to. We look to see what's coming. And this thing that is coming is huge and catastrophic but it's not here yet. Now is the time to prep. I get people all the time, brand new to the channel, and say, what do I do? How can I prep? This is it. You need to stockpile. You need to stockpile as many foods as you can right now. Rice and beans, great. Other things too, we've proven in the past that rice and beans will not, sur- you can't survive in rice and beans alone. You can for a while, but you need to have fats, get lots of canned food, canned meats, uh, instant potatoes, store it away. There's lots of videos on the channel talking about how to do this. But the essence of this video is you need to do this now, right now, because the things that are coming very soon, eventually we're going to see a complete collapse of this entire food system because that's what they want. It's all orchestrated and we have to be ready by prepping. So the question is, are you ready for what's coming?